Welcome back. In this episode, we are going to talk about how to set up what I call a family bank to help your children, empower them, instead of just uh, dumping money in their lap. As you watch this episode, you're going to get some epiphanies and insights into opportunities that maybe you didn't know existed before. And at the end, I'm going to give you the opportunity to receive one of my best-selling books absolutely free. I'll ship it out to you. You just pay nominal shipping and handling fee. And you'll learn more about the nitty gritty of how to set up what I call a family bank. But get ready because you're going to gain insights into ways that you can actually help instead of hinder your children when they need help financially. I'm Doug Andrew. And I've helped people establish what I call a family bank or a legacy bank. This is a conceptual bank, not a chartered bank like down the street, but it works the same way. You make deposits and withdrawals, not just of money or financial assets, but uh, what I call the true cash, uh, spelled K-A-S-H. And you're going to understand that this is far more important that you leave behind uh, how to fish instead of dumping fish in your kids and grandkids laps or whoever you want to benefit charities or what have you in your family bank and it's really understanding the difference between uh, what I call uh, leaving behind the swing instead of a bunch of golf clubs because if you were going to be playing in a golf tournament and you had the choice of using a professional golfer like Phil Mickelson swing or you could use his clubs, what would you choose? Well, I'd rather leave behind the swing, not the clubs. I'd rather have the use of the swing. Most estate planning attorneys focus on dividing up the golf clubs and the trophies among the kids and the grandkids when you die. No, I want to leave behind the strategies, the concepts, knowledge, attitudes, skills, and habits. So in the three-dimensional approach that we talk about on several episodes, this whole channel is about three-dimensional wealth. It's about the financial dimension, the foundational dimension, and the intellectual dimension. But all too often, what I like to do is focus here on the center, and this is what I call the perpetual cash flow. Fund. So if I were to uh, magnify that, or let's instead of highlight, let's magnify it here. Uh, this is the perpetual cash fund. And we're making deposits and withdrawals of not just money for those that you care about, but also all of this wisdom and knowledge and heritage and genealogy and history, your beliefs and values. You're also making deposits into the family record or archive of your experiences, both good and bad, uh, what you learned, your education, reputation, systems, methods, traditions, alliances, ideas, and skills. And so by doing that, this becomes the family bank. So how does this work? This cash is spelled K-A-S-H. Knowledge, attitudes, skills, and habits. I would rather leave behind that cash to those that I care about than a bunch of money, the C-A-S-H, because this will generate the C-A-S-H cash into perpetuity. And when we talk about a cash fund or a family bank, Fund is an acronym. I'm an acronym guy. So fund uh, means family a unity that never dies. Uh, and I like team stands for together, everyone achieves more. So when we look at the family bank concept, it's uh, having balance between the financial dimension, the foundational dimension, and the intellectual dimension. And it's really learning and teaching how to be healthy, wealthy, in, and wise in all three dimensions. In fact, I'm writing a book with that title, uh, Wealthy, Healthy, and Wise, because this is like a three-legged stool. And all too often, when all you do is leave behind money, it uh, causes sometimes extraordinary consumption to those you leave it behind to, and it discourages saving money, and it sort of takes families from a we to me, oh, when do I get my share when it's just about the money? So when you leave behind your philosophies about how to be healthy, and not just physically, and not just financially, but uh, emotionally, spiritually, how to be wise and capture the wisdom, the lessons that you've learned. And so I have all kinds of ways that I capture the knowledge, attitudes, skills, and habits 
to deposit that into my own family legacy bank. And so I have a lot of curriculum and videos and education, workshops. I teach it in my various books to empower those people that I care about to uh, teach your children, grandkids, how to live, how to love, how to learn, how to give, and how to earn. This is extremely important when you're wanting to establish a family bank, conceptual bank, a repository where the real value, the real true authentic wealth is transferred using a system uh, that requires responsibility and accountability, where when they step up to the plate, they have skin in the game. If they need money, uh, they might borrow it. Uh, they may have to come in with a portion and you match it, but you also want them to withdraw and meet together once a year. We have family retreats with a purpose and we help our children and grandchildren understand what our values and vision statement is because we believe it's more important that values are understood before the assets are valued. Then they can be brought into balance and harmony to provide ever increasing results. Also the intellectual assets. And so we challenge our children and grandchildren to always share the wisdom that they've gained uh, from both good and bad experiences. And in the various books that I've written, uh, we share some of the stories where my two sons, for example, on uh, family retreats in Maui, clear back in 2001, withdrew wisdom from the family bank. So let me give you that quick story and then I'm gonna connect the dots for you. So when I talk about deposits and withdrawals, uh, let's say of wisdom over here. So when we have family vacations with a purpose, and I want you to watch the episode that talks about that, many times if we meet in the basement of our home or the canyon or, or Lake Powell, uh, but in Maui, we meet every two years. We've been doing that since our kids were in junior high school. So uh, they will take uh, one day and they withdraw wisdom from dad. Now we all share wisdom, but I remember in 2001, it was right after 9-11, and my two sons were helping me edit my first book, uh, Missed Fortune. And uh, in that book, I talk about how to buy a house with no money down and no credit. And they said, hey dad, can you still do that in a recession? And I said, oh yeah, let me give you my wisdom. When there's anxiety, there's opportunity. So in Maui 2001, I, I taught them how to buy a house with no money down and no credit. And they went back and uh, within three weeks, they had a list of about 30 homes that met the criteria. Long story short, both of my sons bought homes with no money down and no credit. They did it again. The difference between thrivers and arrivers is they repeat the process. And lo and behold, by ages 26 and 28, they had net worths of $1.6 million. And uh, that got the attention of Time Warner, my publisher. So in 2007, my publisher commissioned my two sons to write a book titled Millionaire by 30. Now I co-authored it with them because the average college graduate, uh, 10 years after graduating, only has a net worth of 15,000 back then in 2007. And my two sons had net worths of 1.6 million each, and they didn't learn that in college. And uh, so we believe that you should have your money earning more than you do by age 32. And so they were offered a $400,000 advance. So what do you think the withdrawal of wisdom was in Maui of 2007? Dad, how do you write a book? Oh. You don't have to be a writer to be an author. An author is an authority on a subject. You are authorities on that subject. And so I used a system to be able to help them write this book in 36 hours because I learned. Uh, my first book took 10 years. My next book took uh, one year. My uh, New York Times Wall Street Journal number one bestseller book took only four months. Now I write a book in 36 hours and I have a whole course if you have a book in you uh, where you can do that too. They wrote this book, 12 chapters in 36 hours. That's explained in another episode. But where did they learn to do that? On family retreats where they were withdrawing wisdom. They came back the next year and they shared and made deposits of what they learned for their four sisters. And then they made deposits and this became a bestseller and thousands of people have sent thank you notes for uh, sharing that wisdom they learned. That is the power behind a family bank, capturing the knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits. So my recommendation to you, if you wanna set up a family bank to be able to capture the K-A-S-H, I want you to get a free copy of my book, Entitlement Abolition, because I talk about how to do that in here in chapters five and six. 
I'll gift you one of these absolutely free. Uh, you just go to entitlementabolitionbook.com and pay a nominal uh, $5.95 shipping and handling. And I want to uh, send this out to you immediately. You can also uh, have options to upgrade to audio and digital and mini courses if you want. But it's really to empower you to understand how you can set up your family bank with the rules of governance you want to take care and empower those that you care about. Thank you.